back for another episode of Architecture Essentials. I'm Angela and I'm really excited to be here with you today because we are going to talk about neighborhoods. And as you can see, my surroundings look a little bit different than they normally do um, because I'm sitting on the floor in the Arschler Middle Design Studio here at the Chicago Architecture Center. And I'm surrounded by some kind of unique and unusual materials. And these are going to be really important in just a minute. But first, before we start to talk about that, I want to ask you, or I want you to start thinking about the idea of a neighborhood. Now, I'm assuming that most of us have not been able to get out in our cities or in our towns as much as we normally would or as much as we would like to. But what that opens us up for is the opportunity to really think about our neighborhoods, the way they look, how they're organized, um, you know, questions like, how did, how did this neighborhood get to be? Why is my neighborhood the name of the neighborhood that it is? You know, here in Chicago, we have, uh, we like to say that we have 77 recognized and named neighborhoods, although some would argue that we have many more than that, uh, depending on where you live and where the boundary lines are. But especially in a city like Chicago or other big cities, um, each individual neighborhood has its own character, it has its own flair, it has its own spice to it. Um, and I always like to say when I travel to a different Chicago neighborhood, I sometimes feel like I'm in a completely uh, new town. There's all kinds of new experiences, the parks look different, the architecture looks different, the restaurants sometimes are different. Um, and so that really is one of the benefits of living in a larger city. However, if you live in a smaller town or a suburban town or even a more rural area, there are still some similarities in neighborhoods that happen exactly where you live or that you can look out your window right now and see um, a road or a street out front, sidewalks, trees, property lines divided up where people live and sometimes fences that sort of mark those property lines out. So the activity that we're gonna do today is thinking about neighborhoods and particularly designing a neighborhood that you would want to live in. So some of the materials that I want you to be aware of and that I want you to have close by. If you have a scratch piece of paper or if even better yet, if you have a pad of post-its, it doesn't matter the color, just pick your favorite color, um, something to write with, that's going to be really helpful. Another thing that's going to be really helpful uh, in a few minutes is either something like blocks or Lego, if you have Lego handy at home. If you don't have those things, that's okay. Um, scrap paper and mixed materials like random pieces of cardboard and odds and ends paper and some scotch tape will work just as well. So one of the things that I want you to think about is I want you to imagine that you walked out into an open field somewhere. There was no buildings, no roads, no markings of any kind. You're just standing there in the middle of an open field and you decide that you are going to build a town there or a neighborhood. I want you to start to think about what are some of the things that you would want in that neighborhood? So we're gonna do a little bit of brainstorming together. So for example, would you want a grocery store? Would you want a park? What about public transportation or a, a system for people to get around? School, um, a library, right? Hotels or entertainment, things for people to do in your town. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take that scratch piece of paper or your post-its if you have it, and your marker, and I want you to write down one idea per post-it. So for example, I would write down, the first thing that I would write down would be parks. I want to make sure that I have parks in my town. I write parks really big on my post-it, I peel it off, and I just kind of set it to the side. The next idea maybe I have is schools. So I would write school down, take it off, set it to the side, okay? I'm going to give you about 90 seconds to brainstorm as many ideas of things that you want in your neighborhood or in your town. And then we're going to come back together. All right. Ready, set, go.
Okay, how'd you do? Did you come up with a lot? Sometimes it's hard to come up with those first few, and then once you get a couple, they really start going. Now, if you wanna take a little bit more time and brainstorm more ideas, that's totally fine with me. But I'm gonna move on to the next step. So I put a few things out too, of some things that I would want in my neighborhood. I'm gonna share them with you, and I want you to share back with me or tell me if you had some of the same things. So I already mentioned before that I have parks. That's something that's really important. I love green space. I love being outside in the nicer weather. I put schools, houses, a library, shopping stores or retail stores, grocery stores, for example, a hospital, a movie theater. What are some of the things that you put? So it sounds like a lot of you really liked parks and green spaces as well. You really want to be outside, especially as the weather starts getting nicer. I heard swimming pools. I also heard libraries, school houses. Did you think of anything that maybe you would need, but maybe didn't, you know, is it something that you would use on a regular basis? Like a hospital or what if, what if something caught on fire? What would you need? You'd need a fire department, right? Um, what else? What else can we think of? Hmm. We put schools down, maybe houses of worship, if that's something that's important to you that you wanted to include. Maybe forest preserves or hiking trails, swimming pools. You can tell that I'm really ready to be outside, can't you? <laughs> So now the second step in this process is once we have everything sort of written down, the things we want to make sure that we include, our second step is to think about something that um, designers think about when mapping out a city or mapping out um, how they want things to be built. And there's actually a job, that's somebody's job to think about in cities and towns. And those are called urban planners, urban planners. And they have to think about how are the streets and roads laid out? Where are the buildings gonna go? Do we have adequate um, parks and recreation space? So what one thing that we're gonna think about when we look at our post-its or we look at our scrap pieces of paper is something that we call adjacencies, which means what is next to each other? What goes with what? I'm gonna give you an example. I have here, I have parks, I have a school, and I have a library. Now, if I were mapping my town out, I would want to make sure that the school, the park, and the library were close to each other. I feel like the school might need use of the library, might need to make use of that, especially for like after school programs and things like that, that um, I know we do here at our Chicago Public Libraries. And also having parks and green space close to the school is really important for outdoor and social time. So I would wanna group these three things close to each other, okay? Now, maybe I would want the movie theater and shops and restaurants and stores to also be close together, sort of like an entertainment district or, or area together, okay? So I'm gonna group those close to each other. Now I've got a hospital or if you have like a fire or a police department, something like that, you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to have to make some design choices, whether you want the hospital to be maybe right in the middle of town. So if there was an emergency, the, the hospital or the, or the EMTs can respond quickly, right? So they're maybe kind of like in the center and they can get to the outsides of the neighborhood quick. Or maybe you're concerned about the sirens being really loud. So you want the hospital to maybe be a little bit further out of your neighborhood. That's a decision that you have to make. And then I wrote down houses was my last one. And I wanna think about the houses maybe being a little bit, uh, I want them to be close to where the action's happening, but I also want them to be a little bit further away because I want some peace and quiet. So I may be gonna put the houses sort of close to the theater and restaurants um, and the school but not right in the middle of everything. Does that make sense? I'm gonna put it over here. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to think about what you want in your neighborhood. What did you write on your post-its or your scratch pieces of paper? 
and I want you to organize it as to where you want everything to go. Think about those adjacencies. What do you want next to each other? Okay? And I'm going to give you about two minutes to map that out, and then we'll come back together. Okay, do you have it mapped out? Can you visually see sort of where everything is gonna be in your neighborhood? If you need a little bit more time, that's okay. You can hit pause and you can come back anytime you want, okay? So kind of the, the next step in this process, and let's, let's review really quick, okay? So we talked about what makes a good neighborhood in your opinion? What do you want in your neighborhood? What needs does your neighborhood have? Then we wrote them down on post-its. Then we sort of organized them by adjacency of where we want things mapped out, what makes sense to us. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're actually gonna build, we're gonna build these. And that's where the Lego or the block or the mixed media uh, like scrap and scratch paper materials come in, okay? And this is gonna take quite a while for you to do because what I would love to have you do is, for example, take your school, I have a school right here, and I would love it if you could build with your Lego or whatever materials that you have, your blocks, and once you're done with building your school, I want you to take your post-it and put it right on top of the school and label it school. And then move on to maybe the hospital or the parks or whatever comes next. And I have used some colorful tape here on the floor, just some colorful masking tape. And this is just kind of a nice to have, but not necessarily need to have. But I started to tape out roads and I have some blue over here because I love out outside and I actually live very close to Lake Michigan. Um, I love going there in the summertime. So I have kind of a large body of water here. I have some green tape over here to signify a park. And so what I want you to do is when, after you get your structure built, I want you to begin to place it in your city and sort of, again, map it out, but in a three dimensional version so that you really can see almost from a, an aerial or bird's eye view. Imagine you're a bird flying over your town that you live in now. You can start to see some, some patterns. You can start to see some commonalities between buildings and, and structures and really start to see what makes sense and what doesn't. Now, the cool thing about this activity that you don't really get to do that urban planners really can't do in real life is once you have it built, if you don't like where it is, change it. And I'd be really interested to see when this project is all done and you have everything sort of built and mapped out. I would love, love, love if you could take a picture of your designed neighborhood or your designed city and email it in to us or leave it in the comment section below of what you sort of came up with in your plan. Now, the last step on the design process that we use here at the Chicago Architecture Center when we work with our young people is a system called the design process. And one of the last steps on the design process is to sort of 
talk about your work or advocate for the design choices that you make. So the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to name your town or name your neighborhood. So for example, here in Chicago, we have a lot of different names for neighborhoods. There's Bronzeville, there's Wrigleyville, Logan Square, Lincoln Park, Austin, right? Lawndale, South Loop, there's all different kinds of names for neighborhoods. But I want you to come up with a name for your neighborhood that's special to you. Something that represents your neighborhood and the citizens that live there and the, and the people and the participants who live in your neighborhood. Because architects and designers very rarely design for themselves. They're usually designing for other people, for their clients. So I want you to think about what does your neighborhood look like? Who is it for? If you wanted to take this a step further, you could even interview the people who live in your house and find out what needs do they have? What would they like to see in a neighborhood or in a town? They may have some ideas that maybe you've never thought of before, which is a really cool thing about working in a group situation. Now, I'm so glad that you joined us today. If you would like other information about books or resources, especially children's books that have to do with city planning and, and mapping out cities and neighborhoods, they're written in the comment section, or excuse me, in the details section below um, with some links to the books. I would encourage you to check those out. Um, but in the meantime, I'm excited to see your final projects. Please send them to us, either leave them in the, in the comment section below, or you can email us at education at architecture.org. Until I see you again. <laughs>